I'm going to take you back to your days when you were a kid. I think all of us when we were kids, <laughs> driving the car, or not driving the car, but sitting in the car as our parents were driving the car, the window's down. You stick your hand out the window. Remember doing that as oh, a kid? Oh, absolutely. Love and, to do that. And so when you gave your hand an angle, what do you remember it doing? Whoop. Yeah, so everybody will say it goes up. Yeah. But if you really replay it in your mind and think about it, your hand not only goes up, but it goes back. Never right? noticed And that. so the resulting force, if we want to mm -hmm. drill down a little bit, is, is actually up and back. And of course, from a flying standpoint, we talk about the uppy part is being lift mm -hmm. and the back part being drag. Mm -hmm. And so one of the main principles of light airplane flying is something called action-reaction. It goes back to Isaac Newton. And so for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Well, mm -hmm. if, you, if you give your hand wing mm -hmm. an angle to the wind, you're going to force the wind downward. Mm -hmm. Well, the wind's going to act on your hand as well, and it's going to raise it up, up and back. So you mm -hmm. have your lift and your drag. Well, the control surface of the airplane work really exactly the same way. It's all about manipulating the angle at which the wind is meeting the airplane, and we get certain results, certain consequences when we do that. And it doesn't matter whether we're talking about the elevator or the rudder or even the ailerons. We deflect those, we change how the air moves, and we get some kind of a result. And the, the most common thing we talk about is the elevator controlling the angle of attack of the wing. But if we really think about it, all of these primary controls are angle of attack controllers, even though we don't always think in those terms. And of course, we know the pitch part of it, right? Mm -hmm. Pull back, the nose pitches towards your head, push forward, it pitches towards your feet. But we also have the rudder, controls the, the angle of attack of the fuselage. Mm -hmm. And more often than not, we're trying to actually cancel any lift on the fuselage. We call that coordinated flight. If we move the ailerons around, of course, we get different angles of attack outboard on the wings. And what that does is it results in a differential in the lift, and so we get some rolling action. We see that as our, our head-to-hip movement, whereas the yaw part of it is our ear-to-ear. -ear. Sounds like angle of attack is a critical concept. It's everything, right? Okay. And uh, uh, it, it doesn't matter what the surface is. If you give it enough angle and enough wind, it'll fly. A barn door will fly. Uh, a cow in a tornado will fly. You might not like it, but, but it'll fly. My fuselage will fly. Fuselage will fly. And you see that at air shows, right? Okay. You might see an air show pilot do a, a knife edge pass. Well, mm -hmm. they're using the rudder to give the fuselage kind of an exaggerated angle of attack because mm -hmm. the fuselage is not a very efficient wing, right? Mm -hmm. And so they have to exaggerate it, fly a higher speed. And, and typically, they're not going to be able to fly straight and level for very long. Mm -hmm. Basically, it's just down the show line. And depending on the airplane, if you watch closely enough, it might actually be a little bit of an arc, mm -hmm. right? But yeah, that's what they're doing. They're manipulating the angles of attack of the various parts of the airplane to get the airplane to do certain things. That's great. As a high-level concept, I don't think I ever thought about that because it's a tendency as a pilot to pick out the, each individual control surface and just focus on that. So this is right. a good overall concept to get an understanding of. Right, so, so that just sort of broadens our understanding we can, and we can really kind of see, okay, that's what I'm, I'm doing when I'm manipulating this control and I want this result to happen, right? And so if we actually think about it, all of the parts and pieces on the airplane are wings of some kind. Mm -hmm. The fuselage is a symmetrical wing, mm -hmm. right? Very, very narrow, of course, mm -hmm. not very efficient. Uh, the tail section, it's kind of a flat board if you look at it, but mm -hmm. if you give it an angle, it's going to have lift and drag, and we get certain uh, results by, by doing that. We move the elevator, of course, it's going to change the angle attack of the main wing, mm -hmm. right? Uh, even the flying wires, uh, this particular well, one happens to be round, yeah. so it doesn't really contribute anything for us, right? Mm -hmm. um, if the airplane has flaps, of course, we're making a different wing by deploying mm -hmm. or retracting the flaps. If we think about the propeller, the propeller is a rotating wing. Mm -hmm. And so when it makes lift, we call it thrust. Mm -hmm. So that, that lets us know it's pointing in a certain direction mm -hmm. as opposed to the lift on the wing, which more often than not, unless you're an aerobatic pilot, is pointing up there, right? And you can even, you can even extend that to non-airplanes, helicopters. So think of the rotating propeller. Mm -hmm. If I make that long enough and I position it on the top mm -hmm. and I reconfigure the fuselage so we're not like this, mm -hmm. it's a helicopter. Mm 
-hmm. Well, you got this big rotating wing up there that's got lift and drag. And so it's all about wind and angle resulting in lift and drag.